Coach, hard not to notice, 76% shooting from two-point field goals. What, what did you see there that you felt like you'd exploit against Texas? Well, first of all, I'm on a time restriction, meaning BYU TV has cut me off four minutes. So here we go. <laughs> Uh, I thought Dallin was unbelievable getting to the rim early. Um, I thought our guys cut so hard. It was beautiful. You know, and it was the first half there was a lot, but like Noah's back cut right in front of our bench to finish at the rim kind of got us off, off being stuck. So the way our guys cut to the rim was elite level. Um, they finished their cuts. They had multiple cutters, and our guys passed the ball really well. Shot selection overall seemed obviously very different. Not nearly as many threes as you typically like to shoot. So what, what, what went into the preparation there? Well, that was that's a credit to Texas. It's not that we weren't trying to get them. We're trying to get them. Uh, but they really pushed out on the floor and, and they kind of said, hey, we're going to take that away. And if you can beat us another way, beat us another way. And so um, it's a credit to them. You know, they had a great defensive game plan and our guys just responded the best that we could. What's the key to overcoming a scenario when Texas makes their first five three-point yeah. shots because it felt like BYU did not flinch. Well, we flinched in, as a staff. We were like, wow. Uh, but actually, Texas has done this the last couple of games. They've shot the ball incredibly well, and they're really talented shooting. We just had to make some adjustments. So what's interesting, they stretch us out. So our first pass rotation, which don't worry about what that means, but our first pass rotation was stretched out all the way almost to the strong side of the floor at the top. And because we have a smash down guy, it was making our first pass rotation so long and we weren't responding to it very well. We were a little timid on the on the monster at first. And so they were kind of this and this. This D. Sue is, is the returning MVP of the Big 12 tournament. Like he's an elite level player. And so they caught, he, he was the one earning them all those shots and we just didn't respond. But the guys did a much better job cleaning up a little bit better in the second half. What did you think of the performances specifically of your guard line down hall and Jackson Robinson today? I thought uh, both of them had moments where they were elite. Uh, I thought Dallin, um, Dallin getting to the rim uh, in the first half was really important to us. Uh, and it, you know what's really magical about Dallin is um, is the extra dribble he's squeezing where he gets to make the decision really, really late. Uh, it's like next level stuff. Most guys are kind of getting by a guy, getting shoulders in and pick up, up the ball around the free throw line and then it just becomes a hope play. And none of those plays he made in the first half were hope plays. They were all like elite level, wait to the last second to make a redecision play. And then I think it was contagious for the rest of the guys. And let's mention the fact now that the game is over that your team's been dealing with sickness and the flu, specifically Richie and, and Trevin and Down, they've had some things. So how are you able to overcome that? Well, we haven't seen Richie since the game today. We literally haven't seen him. I've been FaceTime. Tell you something about Richie. So I FaceTimed him yesterday and he wasn't allowed to come in because he was so sick, but he was on the treadmill trying to sweat it out. So that's who Richie Saunders is. And, and I was so happy for him. You know, he, sh he walked in the building. We didn't know if he would, and then and then he r races down there and bangs his first corner three, and we're like, okay, it's good. So now he's convinced that he doesn't need to practice. Like, he's done with practice. He just wants to play in the games. Noah feels that way, too, a little bit. No, no, I thought Noah was terrific today, and Ali was a, literally a game-time decision this morning at shoot-around. Uh, kind of felt like he wasn't going to play, and then he warmed up and he was okay. And so uh, that's been – it was a gift to have him on the court, too. What will a week off do for this team? And, and I, I say that hesitantly. It's not really a week off, but like no midweek game. How, how will that help? Well, of course, we're thinking about our guys' health, number one. Can we, can we get healthier? Please let us get healthier. And number two, you know, this, this, this league challenges you to get out in front of it. So we can't actually show up on the court uh, the same scheme and the same team and the same ideas. And we're going to have to insert a lot of wrinkles on both sides of the ball uh, to kind of begin this next stretch in this league to try and stay competitive. What can you tell us about West Virginia at this point without having dived in too deeply? Um, I know it's an incredibly, they just beat Kansas on their home floor, right? Uh, and it's an incredibly difficult place to play. And we're going to have a battle. And that's not telling anybody anything they don't know because that's this league. Beyond that, I don't really know anything. Yet. Yeah. We'll finish with this. Uh, so many things your team did well today, but your coach, you're going to be looking at things you want to clean up. So what are you hoping to clean up? What's at the top of the list? Yeah, so, uh, you know, there were, there were a few things. One is kind of our rotations, like challenging rotations are this league challenges you to make challenging rotations um, as you commit extra players. So that's going to be something we're looking at. Clearly, we're going to continue to work really hard on the glass. Um, and then really, we're trying to reinvent ourselves. We didn't get a lot of opportunities, but we're going to reinvent ourselves a little bit offensively. Um, this exact same 
philosophy, uh, but we'll bring some newness to the table. I'm going to interview Foose here in a minute. Is there anything I should ask him? Mm, just have him do that. If he does a whole interview, all he does is give you his, like, that rumbling growl. It's like our, te it's our team's favorite word, right? And it means a lot of different things. It's a little bit of speaking in tongues. I think it's just as, like it touches all of our hearts. <laughs> Coach, I appreciate the time. I know that Coaches, for cancer, or Coaches versus Cancer pain means a lot to you as well. Yeah, uh, this has been Coach versus Cancer week, and, and – um, um, you know, we, uh, we have so many people here working so hard. This Simmons Center for Cancer Research is, that you're closely affiliated with on this campus and that Leanne is doing so much work with is, is literally on the cusp of, like, altering the way we think about cancer forever. And people have been so incredibly supportive. Every time we see a dunk on cancer, socks, people come and show me their socks or a sweatshirt. And they now came up with these, these uh, Stanley Cups dunk on cancer you get at the bookstore. And every dollar of that goes towards the Simmons Center as well as these incredibly gracious donors. Um, this is touching all of us. I know it's touched you really closely and, and us closely. And, and um, man, you know, this game is so important, but that's more important. And so let's keep making progress. I appreciate the sh and uh, thanks for the time. Okay, thank you, brother. How concise was that, by the way? <laughs> what? <laughs>